Tomorrow is the sixth anniversary of the Lac Megantic rail disaster. Six million liters of toxic oil spilled out, killing 47 people in a lake of fire. What lessons have been learned since the deadliest Canadian rail disaster in more than 150 years? Joining us now this morning is Bruce Campbell, adjunct professor at York University and the author of the book, Lac Megantic Rail Disaster, Public Betrayal, Justice Denied. In the wake of the crash, Transportation Safety Board investigated and made a series of recommendations for improving rail safety. As of 2018, though, only two of them have been fully implemented. Bruce, what still needs to be done? Well, just remind ourselves first uh, about the magnitude. This is an, was an unprecedented uh, disaster on Canadian soil. The whole center of the town was incinerated. There were 27 kids that were orphaned, and there's an ongoing um, devastating effects, health and environmental, that the community still lives with. In terms of um, uh, one of the most, I think, serious um, recommendation of the transportation safety was measures to improve uh, securement uh, so that the trains don't run away. In fact, since Lac Megantic, there has been an increase in train runaways. Uh, there's also been, especially since 2016, there's been a 25% increase in in uh, accidents with train derailments with trains carrying dangerous goods. So, you know, there's a lot of things that that uh, sh should have been done in the wake that aren't. Um, there are longer, quite, the, the trains, uh, the unit oil trains uh, are quite a bit longer than they were at the time of Megantic. So longer, heavier trains, more stress on the tracks, no rules limiting the size and the weight of trains. So that's just some of the safety gaps uh, there have been a number of, of, of improvements, but there remain major safety gaps. Now, Bruce, I, I was in Lac Megantic after the disaster happened, uh, just a few hours, in fact, and uh, the people there said they, they had raised concerns about this, the fact that the, the rail line come cutting right through the center of that town. And after the fact, when I went back to follow up on this story at uh, different anniversaries, uh, they say that they, their voices weren't being heard. You've spoken with these people. You've stayed in contact. That's what they're saying to you as well? Yeah, I mean, yes, you, you know that, that, that it was a very sharp curve at the bottom of a hill. The train ran away when it derailed. It was going at, uh, at 105 kilometers. It virtually incinerated the town center. So there's a big open field, which you've prob probably seen. And the, and the corner that they rebuilt, because they rebuilt it within a few months, is actually sharper. Yeah. Now, finally, after a lot of pressure, um, there is a bypass that's been agreed to. Uh, and I think that's going to alleviate uh, some of the trauma that still exists. And as you know, it's still very widespread six years after. Well, how could it not be, right? I mean, what that did exactly. to that community is a, a nightmare that you'll never wake up from. Uh, nationally, Bruce, uh, there are some rail safety improvements that ha have come out of this. Can you talk about those? Yeah, I mean, they've done, uh, uh, right after it happened, in fact, days after it happened, they, they prohibited single-person crews. Because as you know, this delinquent railway was allowed to run these massive trains with a single with a single operator. So within days, they prohibited single person crews. They also uh, created a new, a stronger design that got rid of some of the worst cars, uh, those cars that were, were on that train and most of them derailed and punctured and exploded. So those cars are largely gone from, from transporting um, dangerous goods. The, the new design still has problems. There are still uh, derailments and spills and most recently in St. Lazar, Manitoba. So there's still real problems, and they're not stabilizing the oil when, the, when they're putting it on to trains. No. So it's still a volatile product. Thank you, Bruce, for this. Uh, the timing of your book's very important. We appreciate you joining us this morning. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.